My name is David McLeod. Um, I'm the um, co-founder um, and CEO of Backbone Connect. We're an IT managed services company. We're laser focused on solving problems for landlords, um, helping them uh, solve their challenges around sustainability and offering better, more flexible services to their tenants. I think, listen, I think we all recognise that we have a responsibility to play in um, combating climate change. Taking some action in our own lives and, and in our working lives to do something about that. Why is it important? It's important for two reasons. One, obviously, because um, the consequences of not doing that are pretty grim for our children and our grandchildren. So we should do something just even on that basis. But even closer to home and in the short term, as a business leader or somebody that's responsible um, for uh, performance of a business, the research shows that you know, greener, greener businesses are much better at attracting talent, they're much better at um, attracting investors and the research also shows that customers would be prepared to pay more if your brand is associated with being greener and your, um, the way you operate is greener. And they're credible and it has to be credible and meaningful but the way you operate is greener as well. So I think you know, for those two reasons, one it, it's, it's a really important thing for our future for all of us but also I think it's a, it's a great way to make sure that your business is, um, is sustainable in, in that sense of the word as well. I think in the IT industry, it's an incredibly wasteful industry. Um, it's built around the consumption of hardware and devices and pieces of hardware are incredibly harmful to the world at every stage of the life cycle. They consume huge amounts of resources in order just to extract the minerals from the earth. That has to be transported all around the world, processed multiple times. In use, it consumes electricity. And guess what? When it's disposed of, it ends up often in landfill. And all of those toxic minerals and materials are, are seeping back into the earth as well. So we think it's important to try and slow that down as much as possible, uh, to reuse equipment where possible, to extend the life of equipment where possible, so that it's not disposed of every three to five years, that wherever possible, it's built to be long life, have a long life, and to support multiple customers wherever possible. We're like most companies, um, committed now to reducing our carbon impact. Um, and there's a couple of ways that we're doing that. Um, we look both at the way we run the business internally, you know, how do we operate, uh, what carbon does that generate, what action can we take to reduce that? I mean, how do you do new things? You bring in somebody with experience, you bring in somebody with skills. Um, so we've aligned ourselves with frameworks, external frameworks um, that are credible, um, actionable, and that we can work with to help us reduce that um, carbon impact. So that's number one, what we've done. Um, we've pledged to be net zero, and we're working on that. We've created a green team within the business, um, which uh, helps us look at everything we do and how can we reduce the, how can we make that kinder to the world around us. We also look at, uh, use the ISO 14001 framework as well. Again, it's credible, it's recognized, it's independent, um, and it provides you with a framework and some actions that you can take to continuously reduce um, the impact that you have on the world around you. These things you can't do in 10 minutes, they take time, um, and it's, it's, uh, it's about knowing how to make that continuous improvement. It is a work in progress, um, and actually, there is a, the reality of it is you, it's, it's not necessarily entirely possible to reduce your carbon footprint to zero right away. So in recognition of that, what we do is offset whatever carbon we generate. So we measure it. That's another one of the major steps you should do is measure your carbon impact and then take steps to offset that. There are a number of organizations you can use to do just that. Um, and that helps us be carbon neutral. It's not the ideal way of doing things, but it's a good step in that direction. The second thing we've done is we're in just like most businesses, we have customers, and we can help them reduce their carbon impact as well. Um, so, you know, we've built an R&D team inside the business. Uh, that team um, spend time developing solutions which help our customers reduce their carbon impact as well. So we recognise that there's two roles that we can play as a business. We're doing our best to, um, to, to act on both. Look, our customers are savvy, and their stakeholders are savvy too. Um, there are genuine initiatives that are used to help reduce carbon impact, and, and those things can help you attract better staff or, or make your recruitment easier. They can help you attract investors, um, and they can help you attract customers as well, but it has to be genuine. Um, so if you get it right, it's great for the performance of your business. If you get it wrong, the opposite is true. Um, so if you're, if you're thought to be greenwashing, that can be detrimental to the performance of your business. Um, so 
And I think a lot of our customers, as we are, are very mindful of that and very careful about that. So our advice to them and, to, and the advice that we took was that if you are making claims about um, having products or operating a business in a way that is greener than the competition or just generally greener, then you must be able to demonstrate that. You've got to be able to prove it. It needs to be independently verified and it needs to be credible. The EPD certificate for us absolutely does that. Um, it's independent. BRE and their assessors um, are very thorough. It's a long process and they're right in the detail to prove that what you say is legitimate. So it satisfies our need to prove that the product is, is greener. It's also really useful because landlords and building operators and owners recognise that too and they're pursuing the BREAM certification. Um, to be able to have a BREAM, uh, a building that's certified as BREAM outstanding or, uh, or so on is, uh, is very good for their business um, and again it helps them prove that their green credentials are credible and independently verified. The EPD certificate helps them on that journey as well. Again, I, th I think it's really important that it starts at the top. You know, you have to make a decision at the top. Why? Because it's a value change. It's, a, it's almost a cultural change in the business and that really has to start with the senior leadership. There is trade-offs. You know, there is a trade-off between do I spend my resources and my time and my effort in the business purely focused on making money or am I also going to start thinking about the, the impact this has on the world around us? And there's a bit of a trade-off there, so it has to start at the top. So number one, uh, my advice is make that commitment at top, communicate it to the business and make sure that it's understood and that value change is happening. The second thing I would recommend is nobody's done this before. This is all brand new for all of us, um, yeah, which is a shame, but it is. And as we go on that journey, it's really important to bring in some experience into the business. We did that by aligning ourselves with frameworks and external bodies that have put a lot of thought into this have done some of this before and can give you some actionable things you can do right away and a framework to follow. The great thing about that is it's, it's independent, so you're not checking your own homework, and you can, you can, it's credible because you can share that with your customers and your stakeholders, your staff and, and your investors as well. No, I, I think that's a wonderful, I think it's a great question, it's really topical. Um, I think there is a, um, this feeling inside most businesses that to be green means that you can't be efficient um, or you're less efficient, you can't make good profit um, and actually it costs money to be greener. I'm not necessarily that's always the case. Um, in fact, the three words we use inside the business and lots of, um, you know, the widely known um, in, in this space are to reduce, recycle and to reuse. Um, all of which mean if you follow those concepts, they're all about getting more from the resources you already have. So, you know, for example, if you're able to reduce your energy bill inside your business, that means, or reduce the energy consumption inside your business, means your energy bill will shrink as well. The benefits in terms of business performance are good as well. You know, if you, if you are greener and you're known to be greener, you're able to attract talent more easily. Um, it's proved that customers will pay more and investors are more likely to invest as well. So I think you know, if you want to stay ahead of the competition and you want to outperform the competition, I think green and sustainability has to be part of your strategy. I think it's really important to make sure, and I think this is where a lot of our customers, and even we, you know, when we're choosing suppliers, this can be a bit of a minefield. Um, it's really important that you check the claims, okay, and you look for data and you look for independent verification to prove that the claims are legitimate. With the dangers of greenwashing and our hyper-connected world, if you develop a reputation for greenwashing, that is really damaging to the business. It's, not, not, it's just not a good thing to do. So we need to be vigilant about that. The way to do it is when you're considering making an investment around technology in order to reduce your carbon impact, listen to, the, to what's being said, but make sure you seek out independent verification, check the data, best way to do that as far as we're concerned is to look for some kind of third party that has verified the claims. An independent, um, credible source has verified the claims. There are bodies that do just that, you know, the BRE with the EPD certification is an example of that where they do um, an exhaustive analysis of the claims and back it up with, um, with an assessment that proves it one way or the other. So that would be my advice to anybody looking to invest in technology in order to reduce their carbon footprint, is check the claims, look for the data, and look for independent verification.